What's up designers and welcome back to Remington Games. Fractals are one of the coolest things out there. A fractal is anything that shows self-similarity at different scales, which basically just means that it looks similar when you zoom in and out on it. Mathematics has come up with some really cool fractals, such as the Mandelbrot set, which was one of the first fractals ever discovered, or the Sherpinsky Triangle, which kind of looks like infinitely repeating Triforces. However, fractals are not only found in math, but in nature too. Romanesco broccoli, for example, is well known for growing in beautiful fractal patterns. Trees also grow in fractal patterns. They have a repeating branching pattern that occurs on many different levels, which comes together to form some incredibly complicated networks of branches. If you zoom in even further, even the veins on the leaves of the trees carry a similar structure to the entire tree itself. These patterns can also be seen in the way that frost crystals grow on surfaces or the way that electricity moves through objects. Fractals can be beautiful, but they can also be incredibly useful, particularly in computer graphics. By studying the fractal patterns found in nature, programmers can create programs that can mimic them. By studying the branching patterns of trees, it's possible to create a program to mimic those, and by slightly varying the parameters, you can come up with an infinite number of unique, procedurally generated trees. These fractal patterns can also be applied at a larger scale to generate entire landscapes. In the real world, many different types of geographic features show fractal similarity, from mountains to rivers to coastlines. In the same way, fractals can be used by programmers to procedurally generate these terrains without having to model them by hand and can get some pretty impressive results. However, while these techniques can be very useful, they're not what I mean when I refer to fractal game design. Just like a fractal looks similar when you zoom in and out on it, so do some video games. Not on a visual level, but on a mechanical one. For a great example of this, simply look at The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In this game, Link finds himself on a mysterious island full of strange inhabitants with no apparent way off. Link wants to leave the island, and in order to do so, he must uncover its many secrets and mysteries. As Link explores, he'll come across various dungeons that he must complete. As he does so, he'll collect new items and abilities that will help him explore areas of the island that were previously unreachable. Link's Awakening can be seen as a fractal three layers deep. On the outer layer, you have Koholint Island itself, which is the larger overarching puzzle that Link must solve. Zooming in a bit, and you have the individual dungeons themselves, each which represents a self-contained challenge that Link must overcome. At the smallest layer, you have an individual dungeon room. As can be seen with the Dungeon Maker feature which was added in the Switch remake, each individual dungeon room can be seen as a small, self-contained puzzle that Link must overcome. Each of these layers is different, but they all strongly resemble each other, because the core gameplay is the same. At every level, whether it be individual room, dungeon, or world map, the core gameplay loop is the same. Link uncovers a new item or ability, experiments and figures out how to use that item or ability, and then uses it to solve puzzles that allow him to move on to the next stage. Each room in Link's Awakening generally has one main puzzle, which often serves as a way to teach Link how to use his new abilities. For example, certain enemies might teleport away when you try to hit them, so you have to use your abilities and your items to figure out how to defeat them. For example, leaving a bomb behind to the place that you know they're going to teleport to. Defeating all these enemies might allow you to find a key that you can use to unlock new areas of the dungeon. As you explore the dungeon, you might find an item like a hookshot, which you can then use to explore new areas of the world map. This fractal pattern emerges naturally out of a design that is driven by a single core mechanical principle. By taking this single mechanical principle and applying it to multiple areas of the game, you can create a game that feels cohesive without getting too repetitive. If the core mechanical idea is solid, then this can lead to some really original and interesting and unique games. Another great example of fractal game design is in the puzzle game The Witness. The core mechanical idea of The Witness is to solve a series of similar puzzles all with the same setup. Your goal is to draw a single line, 
from a starting space to an ending position. While these puzzles seem simple at first, designer Jonathan Blow explores this simple concept more exhaustively than I've ever seen before. In addition to coming up with dozens of unique twists on this basic mechanic, he also applies this mechanic at multiple layers to create a fractal effect. At the lowest level, you have each individual puzzle, which must be solved to activate the next puzzle in the sequence. Zoom out a bit, and you have groups of puzzles with similar mechanics grouped together into unique sub-areas, and each sub-area represents a larger puzzle that must be solved in order to activate a laser. Zooming even further out, and you can even see the entire island as a larger puzzle that requires you to complete multiple sub-areas to unlock new puzzles and eventually complete the game. You could even zoom out one more time to reach the level of the meta-narrative, which players have tried to piece together out of various cryptic clues, and which can require multiple playthroughs to really unravel. While Link's Awakening may have developed its fractal pattern naturally, like the branches of a tree, I believe that the fractal nature of The Witness was entirely intentional, and it has a number of benefits for the game. If The Witness simply presented the players with a sequence of puzzles one after another, it would still be fun, but I don't think the fun would last. I think a lot of players, myself included, would enjoy it for a time, but eventually get bored and move on to the next thing without completing the whole thing. Instead, because of the way the game is laid out, I know that every puzzle is part of something larger. Every time I solved one, I wanted to keep going so I could finally complete the sub-area, and every time I completed a sub-area, I was encouraged to keep going to see what greater mysteries the island had in store. Compare this to another puzzle game that I really enjoy, the color matching game I Love Hue. While I have a lot of fun solving these puzzles, every time I beat one I don't have the same drive to keep going and solve more. While I don't think I'm breaking new ground with the idea that having a larger goal made out of smaller goals can help drive your player through your game, I do think that the fractal approach has a number of benefits. Since larger layers are similar to the smaller layers, you can pretty much guarantee that if your player enjoys it at the micro level, they're also going to enjoy it at the macro level. This isn't something that should be taken for granted, because it's entirely possible for a game to have multiple layers with different styles of gameplay, and there's no guarantee that if players enjoy one layer that they're going to enjoy another. That being said, having layers that require different types of gameplay can add more variety to your game and potentially bring in a wider audience of players. As with all areas of game design, it's a bit of a balancing act. On the one hand, you want to make sure that all the different layers of your game mesh well together, even if they don't line up perfectly. On the other hand, even if you are designing with a fractal pattern in mind, you have to make sure that your game provides enough variety of different activities for the player. Going back to Link's Awakening, the different layers all have the same core style of gameplay, but the types of problems that you have to solve at each level are different. On a room level, you generally only have to take in the information in that room and figure out how your items and abilities interact with the various elements and enemies within that room. On a dungeon level, you need to understand the overall structure of the dungeon, knowing the locations of treasure chests, switches, and other important features. When solving the entire map, it's a matter of understanding how the different parts of the map connect with each other and how you can use your abilities to reach new areas that you couldn't before. For an example of a game that could have used a fractal pattern but didn't, let's take a look at Fire Emblem Three Houses. This game takes place primarily at two different levels, individual battles and the overarching narrative structure. Each of these layers is very different from one another. During individual battles, you're focusing on how to move your troops in a very strategic way, whereas in between, you're running around the monastery trying to recruit students and do various side activities. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. I really enjoyed playing through Three Houses the first time, but I will say that I enjoyed the battling way more than I enjoyed running around the monastery. This could be due to the way I played, but I do feel like these sections of the game really slowed down the pacing and didn't add as much as it could have. In addition, with the exception of one or maybe two major choices, the game is entirely linear. You basically decide on your path at the very beginning, and that determines everything that'll happen for the rest of the game. Once again, 
This isn't necessarily bad, but I do think a fractal approach could have helped bring this game to the next level. How do we apply fractal design to this game? Well, first, we need to start by identifying the core gameplay loop. What is the appealing thing that draws players to this game? I think there are two main things. The first is the tactical combat, and the second is the ability to recruit and build relationships with various different characters. Each of these elements is already in the game at one layer or another, but I believe you could expand these core concepts to inhabit the game at multiple different levels. Throughout the story of Three Houses, the player is presented with what appear to be strategic decisions. Do we attack this capital or that capital? Do we meet and discuss terms with this person, or do we think it's a trap? Do we take the northern route or the western route? These sorts of questions are asked of the player, but no matter what the player chooses, the game will always play out exactly the same way. But what if the player actually got to choose which battles they wanted to make? At different points in the campaign, the player could be presented with multiple different battle options. Then the player could run around the monastery and talk to different people to get their opinions on what they should do. Then at the end of the month, they can take the information that they've learned and make a strategic decision. This could help expand the tactical gameplay to the wider narrative structure. On the other hand, I also think you could have the relationships between the various characters matter more. Because the stories are so linear, the decisions about which characters are going to be allies and which are going to be enemies is basically determined at the very beginning of the game. While you can recruit characters to your cause, this is limited and really only affects the options that you have in battle, not the overall narrative. For an example of where this could have mattered more in the game, there's a particular battle that takes place between three different armies. One of the armies is your enemy. The other army is also your enemy, but initially appears like they could have been your ally. In this fight, I initially thought that maybe I could go and talk to this third army to try and get them on my side, but when I got too close, they attacked. I reset time and decided to take a different tactic, just not attacking them and hoping that they don't get in my way. However, after enough time passed, they eventually started attacking me anyways. I think it could be really interesting if the actions that you took, not only on a battle level, but on the larger strategic level, affected your relationships not only with individual characters, but entire factions. Make the wrong choices, and now everyone is against you. Play your cards right, and you might actually be able to save everyone. While I enjoyed playing Three Houses, I think that some of these changes could have really taken it to the next level and made for a deeper and more cohesive experience. At the end of the day, there are many different ways to design a game, and fractal design is only one possibility. That being said, I think that the principles of fractal design, taking a core mechanical principle and applying it at multiple different layers in your game, can and has resulted in some really interesting games and is a useful tool to keep in mind when designing your next game. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. If you want to see more, check out my other videos, like my last one on designing movement mechanics in games. I also have over a hundred articles on the Remton Games blog, which you can check out in the description down below. And join me next time for part 2 of my Evolution of Pokemon design series, where I'll take a look at the evolution of Pokemon from Generation 2. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.